Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Radiation Radio. It's me, your host, Bo Beard. And I am Red. Unfortunately, a certain squeak cannot be here. <clears throat> he didn't survive the calamity. <sighs> Poor boy. Very unfortunate. Yes. And today, today we're talking about, uh, honestly, one of the greatest movies I've ever seen. One of the best. And that is The Road. The Road is fucking hard. It's also really <laughs> fucking tough. No. Well, it's fucking uh, scary. <laughs> Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh. Yeah, just to start things off, that movie hits you in the feels, to say it the does. least. It's intense, depressing, and Actually, it's um, honestly the most realistic depiction of how an apocalypse would happen here on Earth. Uh, except for the fact that there isn't enough bullets to go around in the United States, but it's been five years since it started, so... Yeah, that's understandable. <laughs> um, so yeah, the um, start of the film, so let's start from the start. So what do you think of the start of the film where it shows like the montage of the war, just the landscape of the world? Yeah, where they woke up in a cave uh-huh. where they were taking shelter. And you know, it switches back to, to, to his past memories of his family, like when they were all together right before the actual incident, right before the actual event. And, like, the following, I'm not sure what exactly, how long that was, basically. It's, so, well, it went from the pregnancy to the to the child being at least, what, maybe five years old? Yeah, five, six years old, so, yeah, yeah. five or six years old, probably. And he did mention that he stopped counting the months or days after a few years, so... Yeah. Can we just say just how fucking tough this guy is to have to survive in such a fucked area? Yeah, he is incredibly um, tough. Yeah, this guy's a mad lad. Like, um, like you know, like people, I guess you could call them lesser men. <laughs> yes. Resorted to awesome. cannibalism while he had a child to raise, and he managed to Teach be a good, morals. treat him morals, be a good father, and not eat people. <laughs> Honestly, like, that man managed to do it. He has his flaws, but then again, you can't judge him at all. Depending no. on where he is. He did everything. Like, he did his absolute best to keep him safe, like, down. Yep. He did everything. The, um... I'm, I'm still wondering how the... Like, how was the set done? Like, how the fuck did they manage to get these? Because it didn't seem CG'd. Like, how did they manage to get, like, just this dead world to come along? The thing is, apparently the movie, from what I heard, uh, was filmed in Detroit. <laughs> it makes perfect sense. <laughs> yeah, although I'm sure, I hope Detroit isn't like that. Uh, we all know it is, come on. <laughs> yeah, let's be honest. Oh, that means God. we're... Yes, that means we're never gonna be able to go there. Anyway. <laughs> yes. All right, so going back to the topic, um, like from what you see at the start of the film, like uh, you don't really know what actually caused the apocalypse or what caused the end of the world, basically. Mm-hmm. And I it have... just also throws in, and honestly, a cave is a perfect starting point. From you have this enclosed space, and then you just have this open wasteland of nothing. Uh, that was a good. Uh... <clears throat> That's a good, uh... That was a good, um, setup, because... From what I know throughout the film is that the film progresses, like, it gets more and more hopeful as the film goes on. And it going into a cave that has running water on it, you know, water means life, to then yeah. turning around and seeing this, just this... land of death and everything is just dead. Everything's yeah, going back to dust. Trees and roads and dust and some mud. <laughs> and cannibals. Yeah, of course, the cannibals. Hillbilly yeah. cannibals. Hillbilly cannibals. Yeah. <sighs> Wait, isn't that from like fucking uh, uh, the DLC from Fallout 3? <laughs> it kind of reminds me. I mean, they're not that bad. <laughs> Yeah, but, yeah, that is true. They're bad, but not that bad. <laughs> so what did you think about the uh, 
I thought the opening was great. I think, as I was watching an lore review on this uh, film, and um, it was saying how, like, the dialogue during the shots where they're, like, just walking around was a bit forced. I have to agree, it did feel a bit forced in places, but... Yeah. I think it provided important context to how the characters were thinking. Or sure. at least the farmer. I agree. I definitely agree to that. And... Look, okay, this might be a bit later on to the movie, after they encounter the cannibals and everything. When they find the house, and they go and then they find a locked cellar. You know what scene I'm talking about, right? That is nightmare fuel. Yeah, just fucking Christ. Yeah, you see why people prefer suicide than that, because it is uh, better. I know, I... A million times better than being trapped in there. I... Like, but then, like, the logistics, like, the people must be... I'm like, the sure. people there must be so starved that, like... That's probably how they're keeping them down there. Yeah. Because, like, you know... Even if... Even with what, there's, like, four of them with shotguns and stuff, okay. And bolt-action rifles. I mean, you could close the distance of how many of them are, so they must be just so fucking deprived of food. They're, they're just... so weak. Like, you can see their bodies. Uh -huh. Some people literally have their arms or legs chopped off. Like, that is... Actually, when you think about it, I think the reason they keep them alive is so the meat stays fresh longer, or yeah. is edible. And that's why there's a good chance that, you know, every night or so, they take one, they chop off their leg or something, then put them back in. Uh, it also seems like, uh... It also seems like, do you remember whenever the, the truck scene, where the farms yeah. on their hiding? You can see the first uh, indication that these people are cannibals is you can see that the you can see one of the guys has their leg cut off. Yeah. So what? So they must be either a cannibalize themselves when needs be, or if you talk talk the shit, you get that. Hmm. You get the cleaver. <laughs> or maybe it was like an act of just pure desperation. Yeah, that's what I... And then he was, was like, first fuck point. it. Fuck it, my leg's tasty. <laughs> <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> oh, God. The thing is about cannibalism, like, in an actual apocalypse, a lot of people would probably resort to it. To it. Uh -huh. And another reason is, um... I don't know what the guy's name is. This is about a guy that got trapped in the cave for over a month. He was lucky because there was, like, running water there so he can drink it. Uh -huh. Problem is, after, I think, like, three weeks approaching to the point where you would start to starve to death. Uh -huh. And this is actually in your mind. Basically, like, things like when you're hungry, like, uh -huh. really hungry. Things that you would normally never eat, you would instantly just consume and it would taste like the greatest thing ever. Uh-huh. Um, eventually, you're before dying, your brain will basically go into the last resort and you will cannibalize yourself like he did. He ate oh, his entire it's... arm off. Ow. And but... it was, quote, the most delicious thing he ever tasted, unfortunately. Your brain tricks you into that. Does it, like, shut off the pain receptors as well? <laughs> I have no clue. I don't want to know. I don't... Yeah. So it's honestly like, I guess it's already engraved that some yeah. people would just move instantly into cannibalism. Oh yeah. I mean, it's honestly something that would definitely happen in an apocalypse. Oh yeah, I. Um. Yeah, and that's probably they're probably the scariest people to run into. To be fair. <laughs> yeah. There's also you know the second scene of. Where they don't get caught, but they see, I think it was like a woman and child getting chased uh -huh. by a shit ton of them. Yeah, that too. That's nightmare fuel. That was, that was hard to watch. It really was. Like, just, uh, damn. Also, like, the, and then, like, uh, the whole, like, f female film is, like, 
is it better to die in this world or live on? Yeah. Like, suicide is brought up pretty much a, a lot. Like, what was it? Like, there was a scene where. Remember, like, after the basement scene? Yeah. Where, where they the... went to the bathroom. Uh -huh. The cannibals actually came back and he only had one bullet. And he was trying to convince his son to shoot himself because there was no <sighs> other way out. And then he would even resort to himself shooting him, which honestly, like, if they couldn't escape, was probably the best decision for him. Because, you know, you don't want your son being locked up in there with the rest of them there. No. Jeez. Um, the, um, what else? Uh, what did you think of the wife, or your man's wife? Oh, uh, I think she was, she was like a good character, you know? Mm -hmm. I guess. She gave up. She was a weak soul. <laughs> <laughs> she, 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 he deserves better. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I mean, like, even if she stayed alive... You know, the food problem would have been way worse for them. Yes, that, that's something and I was thinking. That's honestly probably the reason she did it. Like, she knew that there's a good chance there wouldn't have been enough food already. And just like uh -huh. three people, it's a lot harder to survive with three people uh -huh. when it comes to like food than it's just two. So maybe she, I guess you can say, sacrificed herself Kinda. so they would have more food. Although it was partly self motivated, it was partly self motivated, and I think, yeah, possibly, the probably if you're gonna say anything's intentionally funny in this film is the fact that like, one of the points she brings up the husband on why they should do it is like, oh, because the other families are doing it. <laughs> it's one of those things. <laughs> Everyone else is doing it. <laughs> yeah. It's a trend. <laughs> Follow the trend uh, Oh jeez. Oh no. Uh. Honestly, just like surviving in like, as I said before, like um, surviving this waste and like it's the most realistic one. And you can mm -hmm. just see just how there's nothing to eat, pretty much. Yep. Even if like uh, when they go to supermarkets, where most people would. Like, think it's like Daisy or something where you just go there, like, oh, I, there's an M4, there's an for that, there's the bulletproof vest, there's that. No, there's maybe a Coca Cola, and that's it. That's <laughs> it. Alright, well, look, I don't want to make fun of the viewers, but if there's anyone watching this that has that sort of mentality about the apocalypse, you need to rethink your life, my friend. Yes. <laughs> oh. Your vote is definitely. The most, as I said many times, probably the most realistic, something like Daisy, yeah. ain't gonna happen. Yeah. Ain't gonna happen. And if there are, like, military guys would not just leave a shit ton of fucking AKs, M4s, and, and God knows what <laughs> behind. They would oh, take it Yeah. The, um... So what did uh... you think caused the end? The, the end? That's a bit... Or just the end of the world, the apocalypse, what do you think? I think it, it was a very... I think, in a sense, it was very realistic, and in another sense, I feel like this was like... Okay, what is the worst scenario possible for the apocalypse, but people can still live? Uh, and I think the road is definitely it. Um, like it's worse than yeah. Fallout, it's worse than Daisy. Just because you brought it up, it's worse than um, it's worse than Metro even. Yes, because they it, have multiple running cities, and <laughs> also the mutated animals seem to be edible. Yeah, at least some of them. Um, while well, there's like barely any animals left, but the crops, it's the dog at the end, and the beetle. That's it. The bird as well. Yeah, <laughs> just one bird. Yes. <laughs> Oh jeez. Uh, what else? Um. Uh, 
what do you think of the like what do you think of the scene where like uh just because you brought up the beetle and the the bird the part at, right after they look at the beetle he gets shot at with an arrow yeah i i thought that scene was a bit bullshit like can a flare gun actually kill a man <laughs> yeah i don't know I have no clue when it comes to that. I generally don't know. I yeah. generally... I mean, I think it would be like a punch to the face if you got hit by one. It would probably burn you a bit, but I don't it think would, it would, like, insta-kill you. Well, <laughs> degree burns and you would probably die of infection, but I'm not sure if it would have been an instant death. Like it was portrayed in the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. That scene was... Weird, like honestly. Uh -huh. Yeah. What else? There was also yeah. like. Uh... So you didn't answer the question. What do you I'm think sorry. caused the apocalypse? Oh, this caused girl. it. Yeah. Oh. Well, we know it's not a nuclear one because they never bring up radiation, or that's never really a problem in the film. Yeah. Um. It could be climate change, but I don't see. But in the, um, at the very start, whenever you see them, uh, you see the father looking out the window. Something must have, like, happened, like, uh, when he said, like, at 1 a.m. the light just went off. So, honestly, my personal theory would be, like, a giant asteroid impact just lit up the sky. And just threw so much dust in the air that just started killing everything, pretty much. I uh, it must... Perhaps, uh, that, that could've worked. I think maybe that it, um... What if Yellowstone erupted? No, again, there would be no movie if that happened. Yeah. At least not yeah. in the United States. Or probably in Europe, or even Eastern Europe. Honestly, it would probably honestly it would probably be somewhere around the Middle East and Central Asia. <laughs> oh God, if real sums are up, we're all gonna die. I mean, that's besides the point. <laughs> yeah, we're all fucked. At that point. Get ready. Uh, yeah, Get ready. Honestly, like it's really hard to determine, and I have checked online and everything. Like, no one knows what caused the event. No one. <sighs> But I guess it's like, uh, I guess it's like Fallout, does it really matter? Yeah, it doesn't, yeah, it generally doesn't matter what happened. Uh, like, after a few years. Hmm. Um. So, like, when it comes, when, uh, you know at the end when his father, when the dad actually dies? Uh-huh. And the stranger approaches him. Uh-huh. Uh, for some, like, the thing is... I instantly thought this guy was like a good guy because I... of a reason. Like here's the thing, compared to the first guy who was a cannibal, the entire time he was like implying to go with him, you know, just like constantly like, hey, you can go and just making up excuses. Uh -huh. Well, this guy pretty much just gave him a choice. You can stay with your dad. If you do, don't go on the roads. Uh -huh. I gave him solid advice that would save his life, or you can come with him. Um, I've yeah, I well, I'm, I've already seen this. Uh, this is the second time I've seen this film, so I sort of knew what was going to happen at the end. Yeah. And my original thoughts on the guy was um, is hazy at best. Yeah. Um, I think films kind of like a like a comedy. So like you know, um, like not the sort of like funny laugh comedy, like a comedy original. A comedy like originally was supposed to represent a story that was really bad at the start, but gets better as it goes along. Um, I think that's the vibe they were going for, but like, and seems that the further south you go, the more life there is, so... But then again, like, the... The world is dead, like, even with that happy ending, like, what's gonna happen next? Like, realistically? Yeah, true. 
the thing is like um i'd love to believe that maybe they like fell in shelter they found their other group of survivors but let's be honest this is not a fairy tale where they just like end up finding like a settlement and just eventually rebuilding society it's saying in there is a good chance that the cannibals did find them I don't think the can I don't, well I don't think the and the cannibal groups we saw in the film would find them but a cannibal group probably find them I mean there were yeah I mean let's be honest there's a shit ton of them yeah and um how, how did you feel about the Daz growing uh growing paranoia during the whole film because I feel like it was a bit rushed yeah that is definitely true but then again like I understand them uh-huh. Like after so many traumatic experiences, like you go for like killing a person, you have to raise a son. You know that will take a giant mental toll. And the pretty much almost everyone he saw were just like cannibals and just fucked up people. Yep. So it's under completely understandable that he would be on the edge when it comes to people and just like untrusting, which is completely understandable. And, you know, he wants to protect his son. Like, he wants to make sure he's safe, so he's even gonna jump to oh. something that might be nothing, pretty much. I don't know. This guy's a mad... This guy was honestly a mad man when I came... Yeah. <laughs> like, like, the start of the film with that cannibal, like, uh, grabs his son. What does he do? There's not, like, we stand off. He just... Caps up ass. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it like skins his son's uh fi- like skins his son uh forehead nearly killing him to kill this guy. I mean like there's literally nothing else he could have done at that point. Yeah, to be fair. If he didn't shoot him, like he would have probably just called out to the rest of the guys and instantly he would have gotten swarmed pretty much. Yeah, I know, but still. Yeah. It was still the best decision he could have done. Yeah. Um, or honestly okay, just up. shooting the guy when he was pissing and just booking it. Yeah, they should have done that. Yeah, but then again, you can't blame him. He... He's stressed <laughs> out, he doesn't... He can't... Let's be honest, he probably hasn't slept well, he's malnourished, dehydrated, you know. Okay, true. Here's one yeah. question, actually, I barely saw in the movie. Uh-huh. Water. Water? No, there was plenty of water. So you... you... Saw in one scene how they kept on staying hydrated, they would uh, boil it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, like, when you look at like an empty waste, and you would think there's zero nothing here when it comes to water. Oh, uh, that's that's what I was saying. Like, uh, that's what I was saying. Like, the, sim- the symbolism of the film is like it goes from you, like, the only bit of life that's left is water. Mm hmm. And you like see it and, like that's the only sort of natural state of the world that's left. Like the trees are dead, people are practical people have t- turned into savages basically. Yeah. Or are just barely surviving. And the I get and only the rivers are um, are like what's left of like the natural state of the world. Yeah. And literally. then the as they go further south you start to see more and more life, so that's that was sort of a, a bit of the symbolism of the film. So it went from, um, it went from death to life. Basically, it went from a very very dark, the most probably the most dark apocalyptic film to a bit of hope at the end, seeing like a bit of animals, seeing like wheat grow in like one scene, and seeing the like grass and stuff on the beach. Yeah, like there might be hope. It's a slim chance, but there's still hope, basically. Um, what else? The uh... oh yeah, just one thing. Um, back to the people that think like an apocalypse would be like Daisy or like Fallout or something. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, just your survival chances basically you have this is the most realistic apocalypse so take that in consideration seriously ask yourself do you want to survive it do you really want to have to live through this shit 
impossibly yes. more. Yes. Because you are not going to be lucky like <laughs> he was yeah. in most of the scenes. Especially, like, finding the like the bunker was, like, the jackpot. Yeah, he, that was definitely the jackpot. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> like, uh, again, like, there was also, like, a bunch more that was, like, glimmers of wholesomeness throughout the film. Like, the father uh, drinking a can of coke with his son um, yeah. in the bunker, especially. Like, the part where he's like, what do you want for breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> also when the old guy when they invited him for lunch yeah that too like dinner or whatever you know in the campfire you can't exactly say what type of meal it is yeah. Yeah. it's it's a lever but <laughs> um something that um you know how in most movies especially apocalyptic um, a lot of people have access to a lot of firearms yeah this is the opposite that's something I really liked yeah it was more like well no it's like it always seemed to be there were never every um, besides the cannibal group you saw running after the woman and the child they also they always seem to be more armed than the uh, the two main characters, but never to the point where you're like this is bullshit. It was always like, yeah, shot things. I uh, like hunting rifles, um, shotguns, um, pistols. It was never like, oh, he's got like the M4 and the fucking AR-15 and the AK. Yeah, well, underbarrel, okay, maybe uh, underbarrel grenade launcher with a fucking shotgun <laughs> in his back, but a fucking. <laughs> JPC play carrier on fucking the Russian helmet, <laughs> fucking everything, yes. the rocket launcher, APC. <laughs> it's actually realistic, like weapons you would actually get. You just described or... your airsoft loadout. Hey. <laughs> 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 uh. <laughs> right. Um. Oh yeah, one thing that actually uh, made me think. Uh -huh. You know how most people would just think about transportation, like putting stuff in their car, putting stuff in their backpack. Not a lot of people <laughs> think about have using a shopping cart. Eh, I can see why, but in the roads, like in the in the road sort of apocalypse, it makes sense because there's just, people are really few and far between. Yeah. In an and, apocalypse where there's more people, that would probably get you killed. Yeah, it's true. And also the fact that, like, you know that, like, certain places that they were, like, scavenging were just going to be completely safe because they were out of reach from most people. Yeah, like, finding anyone is extremely rare. Yeah. Anyway, um... Anyway, I think that's all the time we have for tonight. Um... Uh, please press F in the comments for uh, Mr. Squeak, and uh, we'll see you next see week, next gentlemen. Episode. Goodbye. See you guys. Uh, what the... <laughs> press the stop recording button, Red. I'm trying. <laughs>